Hello, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to this unboxing, well it's not really an unboxing, this walkthrough first impressions of the Margaret Peterson Tarot. I've actually had this deck in my collection for a while, but this is finally time, it's finally time for me to be able to, oh come on. That was a very, very excited match. What was the word for the fire thingy? I was like, I was lost. In any case, um, I actually got this deck in a trade. It came to me trimmed. I've been keeping it in a bag just to keep it safe. Uh, but this deck's actually been around for a little while and I was really excited to bring it into my collection. If you haven't seen the Margaret Peterson Tarot, uh, it's just really, really unique. I love the backs. I don't know if I'm going to edge this deck or not. I guess we'll see. But this copy has been trimmed. So it initially had, or it originally had borders that went like this color that went all the way around. So the person who traded for, um, with me for this deck or that traded this deck to me had already trimmed it and did such a spectacular job. Um, now this deck does have a slight bow. The cardstock is on the thin side. I'd say it's about the same cardstock as you'd get from like a Llewellyn deck, possibly even a little bit thinner than that. Um, but I'm okay with that. I'm really excited to dive into all the imagery and we'll look at the guidebook a little bit together as well at the end of this video. But I think what I wanna focus on for this deck is doing a side-by-side -side of this deck with a standard Rider Waite Smith. So I think what I'm gonna do is bring the camera to zoom in a bit and we're gonna go through these cards together. I may have to rearrange suits at some point. Um, and I just wanna kind of deep dive a bit into this deck and what the imagery makes me think of. So let's get zoomed in. Boop, boop, boop. Readjust things slightly. And let's see what we see. So here we have the fool and we have this figure here on the very precipice of a cliff. And it feels like there's just ocean waves all around. So it feels like a really wild scene. There's like almost like storm clouds up here. Um, but where the fool is, there's just a sun and a clear sky. So that's really, really interesting. We can see obviously the classic Rider Waite Smith movement and directionality happening here. There's something about this card, this magic card. I don't know what I think of it. It feels very, it does feel, it makes me think of a mask. And I don't know if that's intended, but one of the things about the magician, of course, is that he he is in the process of putting on a bit of a show, right? And so I feel like working with this deck, I might pull into that mask imagery or I might lean into that mask imagery a little bit more. I'm just seeing if there's any other details that jump out at me. Yeah, see, I feel like there's another little mask there. Really, really interesting. In the High Priestess card, we have this very sort of yawny shape happening here. Um, and this feels like almost like a third eye. Let's see if any other details jump out at us, at me. Yeah, I feel like I'm getting like sort of a peek into a very private chamber. You can see this ins inside this third eye shape. There is actually the head of a figure. She's got the triple moon um, on her head here. I don't know if you can see that. We have the two pillars. There's definitely a lot of mystery in this card. Um, we're definitely straying quite a bit from tradition here and yet everything is present, right? We still have the water behind. We have the veil or the curtain here. It's that black space that she's sort of guarding. We also get, I think, a stronger feeling of doorway. And when you look at this card, actually, you see that the, like this narrows at the top and so does this. They actually make very similar shapes. Um, also interesting here that we have what looks to be the dichotomy of the full moon and the new moon, which is really interesting. Messing up my cards already. I love this Empress. I love this with this like fullness of this like opening flower or bloom shape and she's clearly very centered. She's very in her body, which is something I think of about the Empress is that she's very in her body. She's very present. Um, I really like that image. Again, we're leaning away from tradition here quite a bit. Ooh, the Emperor has a very strong um, orderly, boxy um, feel with all the reds. I don't think I see any people in this card, but it does give off some pretty strong, like there, it's like a cube or a box. Oh, I think that actually might be a figure in the center. Anybody who knows this deck better than me or who just maybe has this uh, video blown up big on their screen and can pick out smaller details, definitely comment below if you see things that I that I haven't pointed out or that I don't seem to see. That I love that actually when people do that. 
So here we have our Hierophant, and I like this image. It gives me the feeling of, there's like a Buddha almost, um, and you get this idea of, I think like being connected to spirit, being connected to divinity here. So you get this idea of somebody who is sort of the um, the speaker of divinity, the uh, bringer of divine messages in a way. This makes me feel more like, a, almost like a guide. This makes me think of a spirit guide in a way. The lovers. This is really interesting. We have the snake coming up through. And we definitely have a couple of faces here. And like this looks like the silhouette of a person from the side. But the snake seems to be the, the dominant image that my eyes are focusing on at the moment. Um, you get this idea though, definitely, of you have almost like a black and a white pillar, sort of a nod back to the High Priestess. I feel like there's so much to see. I almost feel like I could scry in these cards. Just with, they've got that sort of like um, intangibility about them. The Chariot. You can definitely see though, like I feel like you can definitely see the color palettes um, of, of the cards are very similar. Like you can see where the colors are very similar. So here we have, we have a black and white creature in the front and we have this sort of vortex of energy here. This sort of speaks to solar plexus energy to me, which is what the chariot card often represents in my head anyways, that solar plexus -y kind of energy. Um, and that solar plexus energy sort of pushing or driving you forward. Love that. The strength card. Here we have somebody again, very calm and peaceful with sort of the wild or the beast there. But she herself looks like she's got a little bit of feline in her as well, which is really interesting. Very primal, and here we see sort of solar plexus coming up to the heart. I feel like I'm seeing, yeah, it's interesting that I'm seeing so much chakra stuff in these cards. I love the change from the hermit to the crone, but I'm a big fan of that kind of thing, of seeing that sort of like um, divine, wise feminine, wise elderly feminine index. You definitely feel like you can see a figure here interesting how these images sort of slow you down and draw you in. The Wheel of Fortune versus the Wheel of Life. So I was actually showing this card in my weekly deck review um, as a sample from the guidebook and one of the things that jumped out at me right away is you have several people kind of present, right? You have this sort of figure at the top that's got this very serene look on its face um, or kind of um, a confident look, right? And this color yellow, which makes you think, at least makes me think of, again, solar plexus energy, very confident energy. So we've got like a confident figure here on the wheel. And then here we have somebody who's not having a good time and they're in the red, right? You can see they're like freaked out. And then over here you have somebody who's almost like looking like they could be asleep, really relaxed and just kind of going with the flow. Um, this is so, so good to me uh, and speaks to the energy of the wheel really beautifully. Um, the Justice card. So this is where we see a, a, definitely a difference in color palette because we've got a lot more blue here and a lot more red over here. Um, ah, yes. Yeah. So we definitely see some sort of um, weighing out happening here in the background. You can see a figure. It's got to be a scale or something. Again, there's something about the way these are painted that just makes me want to like just sit and stare at them for a while, but we can't do that or we'll be here all day and day. Um, so the hanged man, here's a very, this is probably the closest, most, most traditional image we've seen so far. So definitely very Rider Waite Smith here with the shape of the legs. We also have the sun and moon in balance as well. And it's interesting that there's a figure on the moon and a figure on the sun and each is sort of holding the other, each end of the rope that his foot is dangling from or that he's dangling from by his foot. We also have these two faces. He's got, he's looking pretty serene. There's definitely a lot to read into in this card. Um, and you could see, I can really see how, you know, he could be here and be peaceful or he could be here and be being punished for like actual action, right? So there could be a real sacrifice element to this card. I don't know if I'm making any sense. I'm just getting kind of sucked in. Death. This is an interesting way to depict death. This is really interesting. We have a stone circle in the background. We have this sort of person here seems almost like they're meditating, like they're very at peace with it. And then death seems to be coming up from behind and getting ready to wrap them up in their cloak. And then you take them here. We have the cosmos. This is just really, there's a lot of depth there. So we have temperance traditionally, but we have the mediatrix in the Marguerite Peterson. 
This beautiful way to depict temperance. We have the rainbow, we have sort of earth and sky in balance, we have land and sea in balance. It's beautiful. Sun and moon. Oh, I forgot to switch this one. So here we have the devil. I like to see some good trapped energy in the devil, and I'm definitely getting that feeling here, that feeling of being trapped, but also like this house of mirrors kind of look to this and the way there's like chaos and like confusion. The tower. That's very well done. You can see too the progression in a way from this card to this card. Almost like this is from within the fun house and this is what happens on the outside. Right? The star. I love how peaceful and beautiful and cosmic this card is. It's very, very pretty. The moon. Again, very traditional here. Very Rider Waite Smith. No complaints. Interesting that we have these figures sort of hiding in the pillar. Definitely so much for you to really pick up on. There's also a face in the water here. Um, if you like to read intuitively, I feel like there's a lot of little details you could sort of hone in on when you're reading. So the sun is really focusing on that bright light of the sun. I'm not seeing any evidence of a child, but I do get evidence actually down here of um, almost like in Marseille where you have a couple of people sort of dancing in the sunlight. Okay, so renewal instead of judgment. That's interesting. And it's almost like a... This almost looks like a staff, or I'm not sure what that's supposed to be. I think that's the first image where I'm like, I'm not sure. I mean, really, when we think of judgment as the call or the calling, then it, it could make sense. There could be like a gateway and like an, an offer of a staff of power or something, perhaps, to step into that new, that new world. Could be. I don't know if that's a stretch or if that's what was intended. And then here we have the world... And you really feel like the sense of this figure here is has has that completion within themselves. At least that's what comes to mind for me when I see that card. So we're into the wands. And here we're going to obviously be probably a lot different than the Rider Waite Smith, but we're calling it flames in them, or it's being called flames in the Marguerite Peterson. So you have this like just this flame, this solitary flame. It's not burning anything, it's just all by itself. Like it's kind of in a way existing in a vacuum. And that really does make sense because in a lot of ways that's what the Ace of Wands is, right? It's that it's that flash of inspiration, it's that idea, it's that um, it's that feeling or that creative pull, uh, but it doesn't have any form or structure yet. So that works for me. The two of flames here, we start to see something taking shape. You almost get this feeling of partnership here, like there's two figures almost embracing there. It's really interesting. And then in the three, we, these might be, these are pretty abstract to me right now. Um, this one I'm not so sure what I'm seeing. I'd be curious about your thoughts down below. That one's kind of got me a little stumped. I'm curious if the guidebook actually talks to what you see in the card. Let's take a quick peek. I know we're kind of cheating out of order, but that's okay. So three of, oh, those are the quartz. So let's get into the numbers. I want the three of flame. Fire. Three of flames. So the fire of creativity. A, a song gathering something in the world of the unknown and bringing it into the world of the known. Sounds originating, originating from the pulsating rhythms of your body. Audible breath, daring to express yourself. Red light flowing through your throat. Modulating soft and loud sounds. Playing with vocals and consonants. Back to the ohm, the, primor the primal sound. The mother of all sounds. The atmosphere filling itself with sound. Something new is born. Interesting. It's got a very like sort of channeled feel, this deck. The Four of Flames, which for me is very much a milestone card. Again, we see less chaos from the three. Things seem to have settled a bit here, which makes sense for that card. The Five is where we normally see competition and conflict, and that's definitely happening. You see these like sort of outlines of people sort of arguing or having some kind of physical altercation in the front there. The Six is victory. This is a very, like... Looks a little bit like copulation, I'm not gonna lie. I don't know if that's really, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, I've actually heard somebody refer to the Six of Wands somewhere as the Sex of Wands, so that kind of makes sense. Um, not gonna look in the guidebook because who knows what it says, but that's what I get from that card. The Seven of Wands. We're usually standing our sacred ground, standing up for ourselves. There is a figure here. Again, this is a very slow deck. I feel like you really have to sit with the images for a bit of time. 
And the Eight of Wands, somebody is notching an arrow, um, getting ready to loose an arrow rather, here in the profile, which works. The Nine of Flames, holding on, just kind of holding the line, right? The Ten of Flames, this is the bird and the responsibility. There's like some wing, a winged figure here. I'm not sure how I feel about these miners um, being so sort of intangible. But I feel like the other um, suits may be different. Let's just see. So here we have the page. Lots of, lots of use of color here. The knight. The queen, or the mother, I should say. Was this the son? Yeah, the daughter of the son. Um, and the father. Very emperor-like. Okay, feathers. So we're into swords. So our suits are lining up so far. So feather works for me for the sword. Two feathers for the two of swords. It's going to be very pippish and very, like, you've got bloody feathers now for the three of feathers. Um, I'm a little disappointed because, in a way because I feel like as beautiful as these are, they do feel very intangible. And I'm, I'm going to have to see how it actually reads throughout the week. Um, because at the time I'm filming this, I'm going to be working with this deck for a week. The four, the five, the six. I like this. This almost looks like a, a tunnel or something that you're going, going through, which makes sense for that card. Seven, butterfly. I don't know, you guys. Beautiful artwork. I'm just not sure if it's just a little too abstract for me. The Eight of Feathers. Fear for the Nine of Feathers. The Ten of Feathers. Very moody card. Alright, so now we have the Daughter of Feathers. The Son of Feathers. The Queen or the Mother of Feathers. The Kings have this box these boxy shapes so far. Okay, let's take a look at the cups. In my favorite suit, we'll see how we do. So I see a lotus, that makes me happy. Lotuses and cup suits make me happy, so I'm happy with that. The two of cups, we usually have some sort of like, yes, we have two figures, they're sort of facing each other. So there's a connection here. Three of cups, we definitely get these figures holding cups in the air, so you get that celebratory feeling. The four of cups. Hmm. The five, six. Now I think the minor arcana is losing me a bit. Seven. The eight. The nine. I don't like all the boxes in the cup suit. I think it's throwing me, and I think it's just meant to frame a smaller image. Actually, let's slow down a second. Let's see. Let's see if I see any details in these last few cups that make the meanings come through for me. So the six, I'm not seeing any details here that are really helping me see the six of cups there. The seven, I feel like there's so many details that my eyes just can't quite pick up. The eight is uh, moving on departure. I just, it's a little too muddy, the image. It's not, it's not muddy, like it's well done. It's just that like the details aren't as like clear to me. The nine of cups, this is one of the cards that actually sold me on the deck. It's just an oyster shell with a pearl in it, which I think is so beautiful as a representation of the nine of cups. The 10 of cups just being a beach works for me as well. Um, but so many of these cards are less tangible to me and I'm just struggling a bit. Page of Cups or the Daughter of Cups, the Sun, the Knight, the Queen or the Mother, and the King or the Father. That sort of Buddha like element works for me. And the coins. This is the tangible suit, so we'll see how it, how it goes. Um, that's fine for an ace for me. We get this Lemnus get shape for the two. footprint and an ohm symbol for the three. I don't know guys. The 
Four of coins, almost like a pit or a tunnel. Five of coins, you get that sad face for sure. Six of coins, hands, feet, no, just hands, more hands. Seven of coins. We've got some cave paintings almost. Yeah, I don't know. These aren't really feeling like they resonate very well with me. That's the eight. Nine. Love the labyrinth and the ten of pentacles, but I'm not sure that that makes sense to me in this suit. So I'm not, I'm not sure you guys. Daughter of coins. Son of coins. Mother of coins. And father of coins. Oh boy. You know, I was getting kind of excited through the through some of the major arcana, but let me zoom us back out. But as I got into the minors, I just it really started to lose me. Um, some of these images are really beautiful, but I felt like there was a lot more details to see in the majors. And especially through the wands, I feel like we just got really intangible. And I knew this about this deck, and yet for some reason I feel like when I was looking at images on my computer screen, they just feel felt more tangible to me somehow. Like I could see more details perhaps, um, which could, is, it has been known to happen, right? Like my eyes aren't the greatest for tiny little details. It's one of the reasons why I struggle with decks that have um, really fine detailed artworks or that are overly busy. This one is really stunningly beautiful to look at. But it's just, there's something it's missing that's, that I think helps me to really feel and see the detail. So as, as much as I want to love this, I don't think that I do. So this one is probably actually going to go into my trade pile. Um, I don't usually make a decision that quickly at the walkthrough stage, but um, I could, it was really losing me through the Minor Arcana. I'd be curious to hear what you guys think of this deck. If this is a deck you particularly love, I'd especially like to hear your thoughts on maybe you, there was a lot of details I was missing. There's certainly times where a deck um, and I don't get along simply because the things that jump out at other people just don't jump out at me. And I think that's okay. We can't love all the decks. Um, but I do objectively love this artwork. Like, if I wasn't trying to, like, look at it to see tarot, I think these are beautiful. I would have these paintings all over my house. Um, I love the way that they're done. I think it's absolutely beautiful. But I don't think this deck is for me. Um... That said, as I, as I mentioned, I got this in a trade and it is a beautiful trim job, so I probably will um, be interested in trading or rehoming this in some way to somebody else. Bummer, I kind of liked the poems through the majors, but when I looked at that sample card in the Minor Arcana, it again felt a little all over the place for me. It just wasn't giving me that tangible um, stuff, to, information to chew on, right? So, oh yeah, man. I don't. I, I haven't had a walkthrough, I think, in a very, very long time where I didn't like like where I knew as I was walking through that it wasn't going to be a deck for me. So since I had picked this deck for my weekly deck review, spoiler alert, I'm going to be picking a new deck um, to work with this week. So if you watched my um, Saturday weekly deck review and you saw me say I was going to work with this deck, well, when you're seeing this video, you know I changed my mind. So it'll be a surprise and I'll let you know on the next weekly deck review which, which deck I ended up working with. So thank you again so much for hanging out with me. As always, I'm very interested to hear your thoughts and your feedback down below. So let me know what you think of this deck. Let me know maybe what your experiences have been with it. Or if you were just seeing it for the first time, what did you think? Did things jump out at you that maybe didn't jump out at me? I would love to hear. Remember to like, share, subscribe, do all those good things. Hit the little bell so you get notifications. And if you would like to book a reading with me, you can do that over at supportivetarot.com. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.